And welcome to Filmmaking Today, I'm your host Bojan Dulovic. In this episode we're going to talk about holographic computers and I'm going to show you how I did that scene you just saw. Now first of all you might wonder why would you even want to do that. Well there's a few reasons. I mean number one, sure, it looks cool. It's futuristic but also more importantly it saves you money while shooting. If you don't have money to buy props, if you have a scene with a lot of computers and that kind of stuff and you just don't have the money to buy the props, if you know your way around basic visual effects, you can just do it yourself. I'm planning on using this approach for my next feature film, which is a horror flick that has various elements. One of them is a scene where characters will be using computers and to keep the cost down, I'm just gonna have them use a holographic-esque computer interface. Now these days, that's actually not that far from reality. I mean, yes, we're far from using actual holographic interfaces. However, if you project it onto a table, for example, the keyboard like I did in this scene or on a different kind of a surface, well, that already exists. I mean, Microsoft, for example, years ago came out with, I think they called it the table surface, which is essentially a table with a built-in computer. So this stuff already exists. Yes, the stuff that I did here doesn't exist, obviously, but this is not that far from reality like it was 20, 30 years ago. So if you want to keep the cost down, this is another thing you can do. If you choose to do this, there's a few things you got to be aware of. First of all, it's easier when the camera is locked down and you're not moving it, it's not handheld. Now, if the camera is moving, you do need to do motion tracking and different kind of things. This is not impossible to do, it just becomes a little bit more challenging, that's all. Now, if the projection is in front of the actor, like it is in this clip that I did, it's of course easier. Now, if the projection is behind the actor, that becomes a bit more challenging. So for example, in this scene, I had to do some router scoping. That means you go frame by frame and you cut out, in this case, my hand and isolate that from the rest of the frame. That way you can put the keyboard underneath and then underneath that you would put a plate with just a table. Now, again, this can be a bit challenging because you have to go frame by frame. In my case, this sequence took about a second, maybe even slightly less, and I was shooting 29 frames a second, so it's at the most 29 frames I had to worry about. I think it was 27 or so. However, if you have a sequence that takes maybe uh, 20 seconds or a minute, it can add up. So again, this is all possible. You just got to be aware that it's going to take some work to do, which might still be cheaper than doing it practically, building the props or renting the props and so forth. Now in this case, what I did in Photoshop, I created the keyboard, then I imported an image from the scene and placed the keyboard where it would go so that I have a reference point that I could line it up. Then I imported the keyboard into After Effects, which is what I use for all the effects, and did the router scoping frame by frame. As always guys, if you have any questions, always feel free to let me know and follow me on all the social medias, just type in my name, Bojan Dulovic. Thanks for watching.